Welcome back. You're still tuning to Plus TV Africa, where we are bringing you a special Independence Day broadcast. Uh, we went on a short break to bring in another discussant on this issue, and uh, that's uh, Dr. Dan Ekere, a philosopher. That's a lecturer from the Department of Philosophy, University of Lagos. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Good to have you. Yeah, yeah it's a great pleasure to be here. Thanks. Happy Independence. We can see you all clad in green. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, it <laughs> Some is. Some sort of green. Yeah, what a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, uh, we understand that uh, this is one of those things. I'm trying to hide my feelings about it, but as of last night, we understand the president will be addressing the nation at the parade at 10 a.m. But shockingly, we had a pro uh, the broadcast earlier today. So we are going to give you some of the clips of the broadcast that Mr. President had. Then from there, we will continue the conversation. Take a listen. Where did we stray and how can we remedy and retrace our steps? Often attaining independence, Nigeria's growth trajectory was anchored on policies and programs that positively impacted on all sectors of the economy. However, this journey was cut short by the 30 months of civil war. We came out of the civil war with a focus on reconstruction, rehabilitation, and reconciliation, that enabled, which was truncated by another round of military rule. For a cumulative 29 of our 60 years' existence as a nation, we have been under military rule. My summary of our journey so far as a nation is necessary to appropriately chart where we need to go and how to get there together. Today, I am aware that our economy along with every single economy in the world, is in crisis. We still face security challenges in parts of the country. While our society suffers from high loss of moral rectitude, which is driven by unbridled craving for political control. An underlying cause of most of the problems we have faced as a nation is our consistent harping on artificially contrived fault lines that we have harbored and allowed unnecessarily to fester. In addition, institutions such as civil service, police, the judiciary, the military all suffered from a general decline. We need to begin a sincere process of national healing, and this anniversary presents a genuine opportunity to eliminate old and out on perceptions that are always put to test in the lie they always are. The stereotype of thinking of ourselves as coming from one part of the country before seeing ourselves as Nigerians is a key starting point to project us on the road to our deserved nation's evolution and integration. To start this healing process, we are already blessed with the most important asset any nation requires for such, our people. And this has manifested globally in the exploits of Nigerians in many fields. It has been demonstrated time and time again that Nigerians in the diaspora frequently excel in science, technology, medicine, sports, arts, and many other fields. Similarly, the creativity, ingenuity, and resourcefulness of the Nigerian at home has resulted in globally 
recognize and Davos. I am convinced that if we pursue our aspirations together, we would be able to achieve whatever we desire. That informed our adopting the theme together to mark this epochal event. Together, we can change our condition for the better, and more importantly, together, we can do much more for ourselves and for our country. I choose the path of self-reflection because this is what I do on a daily basis. And I must confess that at most times, I always felt the need for a collective reflection as I know that the foundation for a solid future which this administration is laying can only be sustainable if there is a collective commitment by Nigerians. Nigeria is not a country for Mr. President. Any ruling or opposition party, but a country for all of us, and we must play our part irrespective of challenges we face to make this country what we desire. To achieve this, we must focus our minds together as a people on ways of resolving the identified critical challenges that underlie our present state. These include A, evolving and sustaining a democratic culture that leaves power in the hands of the people. B, supporting the enthronement of the rule of law, demanding accountability of elected representatives and contributing to good governance. C, increasing our commitment to peaceful coexistence in a peaceful, secure, and united Nigeria. D, harnessing and optimizing our tremendous human and natural resources to attain our goal of being in the top 20 economies of the world and in the process, E, lifting 100 million Nigerians out of poverty in 10 years. F, strengthening institutions to make them stronger in protecting national interests and G, imbibing tolerance in diversity. I am a firm believer in transparent, free, fair, and credible elections, as has been demonstrated during my period as a democratically elected president. The recent build-up and the eventual outcome of the Edo state election should encourage Nigeria that it is my commitment to bequeath to this country processes and procedures that would guarantee that the people's votes count. The problems with our electoral process is mainly human-induced as desperate desire for power leads to desperate attempts to gain power and office. Democracy, the world over, and as I am pursuing in Nigeria, recognizes the power of the people. However, if some constituencies choose to bargain off their power, they should be prepared for denial of their rights. This goal is made more urgent if we realize that even after a transparent, free, fair, and credible election, desperation leads to compromising the judiciary to upturn legitimate decisions of the people. It is necessary to therefore support the enthronement of the rule of law by avoiding actions which compromise the judiciary. Fellow Nigerians, our history has shown that we are a people that have the capacity to live peacefully with one another. As a government, we remain committed to our constitutional oath of securing the lives and properties of the citizenry. 
I, however, call on the citizenry to also support government by providing the necessary community level intelligence in addressing. Welcome back, and that was part of the uh, broadcast by the president. He did highlight quite a lot of issues, and uh, we will be touching them from time to time. But quickly, he did say that um, the artificial fault lines, uh, that we shouldn't allow it to fester. And he also talked about the sincere process of national healing. I think I like the, I love that part. Then he also talked about that we've done well in sports, in creative um, industry, and so many things. These are some of the issues that we'll also be talking about later in the day when we'll be looking at uh, the youth and we'll look at the industry that are thriving despite little or no support from the government. Then he mentioned the issue of deepening and sustaining democracy, enthroning the rule of law, increasing our commitment to our national unity. Then talking so quite a lot of issues that he touched about. Yeah. Amaka. I mean, I agree with you completely in the things that you're highlighting. Uh, he also mentioned, like you said, sustaining a democratic culture. Uh, all of the things that he said, uh, most that stood out for me particularly is almost the last uh, bit of what we heard, which is he said, we have the capacity to live together peacefully. Mm. And if you also look at the theme, I think it's all coined around that uh, sense of togetherness. It's, it's also crucial that he recognized the need for national healing. There's a need for us to really come together. So I'm sure we'll leave the floor for our analysts now to help us dissect it. Okay, maybe we should start with uh, the new entrance to have a feel of his voice. You know, uh, uh, you have the privilege of uh, even listening on radio <laughs> while you were coming. Uh, while we have, uh, just to put it on record, we have Dr. Innocent Chukuma still with us, virtually, if network hasn't taken him away. Yeah, and we also that. have, uh, <laughs> we have uh, Dr. Unisa Tanko. Indeed, we are dwelling together. Mm. So let's have your take on this speech. Yeah, thank you. I, I think, uh, well, it's a, a, a beautiful speech to an extent, but then there's always a difference between, you know, reading a speech and actually saying what you believe, you know. Sometimes, clearly, we do know that um, most of the time, speeches are written for, you know, you know, key political officers, and the president is not an exception. But what we, at least when we look at the issues he has raised, particularly the issue of capacity to live together, I think that is a fact, you know. But then there's a huge challenge that is making that, you know, uh, uh, position difficult, and that is leadership. And unfortunately, he's even one of them because practically every you know uh, government we've had has contributed one way or the other to even separate us more. And unfortunately, this happened to be one of such governments that has even promoted that. As a matter of fact, people are now complaining that we are now more divided than we used to be mm. because there have been issues of recruitment that is one-sided, appointments that are one-sided, and. Look at even the issue of the, the, the military uh, the, uh, chiefs. Service chiefs. If you look at the service chiefs, the service chiefs, I mean, how many are there? Where are they from? You know, so that has raised several issues to the extent that even the National Assembly has, you know, not on the basis of where they come from, but I said these men need to go. Bringing you, that is one. Then we've seen issue of recruitment DS, by DSS and all the other issues. You know, so it wasn't for nothing that. Those who our founding father said that we should have a consideration for what they call uh, federal character. All of those issues are there. Then good governance is critical to the sustenance of the system. Good mm. governance is very critical. You know, and what is good governance? The government must create an enabling environment for the citizenry to actually unleash their potentials. But that is not what we are getting. As we speak today, it's not unlikely that before the end of today, there will be news that some other persons have been killed. You know, no, we don't want we, to see that I say it, It's not unlikely, <laughs> because mm -hmm. it has become a daily occurrence, it's to the point that soldiers that the country has invested so much in are being wasted. There are so many other things. Those are the ones who are... There are many others that are not even reported. Mm -hmm. A lot of crises. All of these are issues of governance. So we've not been able to get governance, right? And we're talking about democratic condition. I mean, a culture deepening it. How much of this democratic culture do these leaders actually understand? How much of it? What democratic culture are we setting? Are we copying somebody? Or do we have a culture we are trying to build? 
into this particular space. Because I recall clearly that almost everybody believed or accepts that the Greeks were actually the first to practice what is today substantially known as, as democracy. democracy. Yeah, but now look at the practice. What happened in Greece? Is that what is happening in the US? Is that what is happening in the uh, uh, UK and the rest of them? Even within the West, you still see that each and every group try to create a system that functions for it. For it. That okay. we have been copying. Hmm. Hmm. That's a good thing. It's a system that works for it. Yes. So the need to have a homegrown uh, system that That's true. works for us. All right, we still have a... Okay, let me, let me talk to uh, Dr. Yunusa, if you're still there. Now, two issues that I've listened to Dr. Dan Ekeri and the doc, I mean, Mr. Innocent Chukuma is the issue of how do we build a strong institution? I, I remember what uh, Mr. Chukuma did say. He said that uh, we should actually enthrone merit over some other factors like what you might call culture system, what you might call affirmative action. It has to be 35% of women, whether there is brain or beauty. These are some of the issues that I suspect that he raised. So what's your take on building a strong institution and a strong leadership? I guess you are referring to me now. Um, yes, yes. Yeah, okay. When you come to the issue of um, a strong institution, now, uh, there's something that they call discipline. Discipline has to be done within a system itself. A system works when you do not dis discriminate against individuals who have done something wrong. A case in study, you have a corrupt officer who comes from a certain part of the country and he had done something wrong. Instead of you to discipline him based on what he has done according to dictates of law and order, you panabit that situation and allow that person to go scot-free. Now, another person performed the same situation, then you would discipline that maybe even a lesser crime you discipline that person and give him all kind of condition of names, telling him he's a thief, he's a corrupt person, and all kind of things. That is discrimination. There is no discipline in the system. So people don't believe that the system works for everybody. The system must work for everybody where um, form of employment is done based on merit and carried along every sphere of this particular country. I, I give an analogy. I said at a point in time, I want to believe that in Nigeria that really works for all of us is when the leaders of this country show kind of um, leadership by example. A, a, when you have a kitchen cabinet of Mr. President that depicts the different, at least major speaking languages in this country, you have an Igbo man, you have a Yoruba man, you have an Hausa man, who becomes your think tank? and be telling you things that are happening within their own environment, it will give a sense of belonging to everybody that, look, we need to sit up and let everything work according to the rules and regulations. And that is how an institution works. Not when you do it for the interest of your own persons or your own people, then you think it works. It sends a wrong signal to the other part that things are not meant for me as a person. And that is the reason why when people in, in the Southeast are agitating, in the agitation for the Southeast, for example, they are saying that, look, every section or the zones of this country, some of them have seven states under it. Some have six and seven states, and then they have only five. They feel there's no fairness in that. And what does it take for you to give the Southeast people, one more state at least to have a minimum threshold that belongs to everybody. That way people will start belonging and everybody that belongs to that particular system will start working together and say, look, this country is ours and everybody must work together to ensure that the system works for everybody. Right. Anything short of that, institution will not perform the way it ought to. And there's this particular fear that probably um, it is not my part of my people, 
I am not protected. And I think that is wrong. I, I, I have this strong feeling that when Mr. President, sorry, I have to refer to this particular government because that is the trend, trending situation. Because at the time Mr. President was referring to people when he was campaigning, Mr. President campaigned wearing different color, beautiful colors of Nigerian garments. When he goes to Calabar, you see him with the skirt and all. When he went to Sokoto, you see him with Babariga. When you went to Ibadan or Yo, you see him with the Abitiaja cap and the rest. Of it. When you went, when he was in the Ebola, and you saw him with the cap and all. But I want to ask, as of today, since Mr. President became the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, have you seen him changing clothes that reflect the colors mm. of those particular different mm. ethnic groups? Mm. He has it. Yeah. And right. that does not show unity of purpose. So it is good I listen to the beautiful rhetorics of the, uh, 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 of, the uh, 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 of the speech. These speeches have been repeated over and over and over again. What we need is action. All right. What we need is action. We want to see Mr. President wearing an element, a, a protective element, going to the southeast on the road of Onicha to Enugu, giving construction, construction right, companies Tanko, directives. Let's Look, uh, bring in, uh, let's bring in, in Mr. Chukuma from the other Go end. To the south, south. Look, I'm listening to you as a people. I want to see building houses for my people on the street who are in the trenches. In the All right, streets. we will Please. we will take uh, Mr. Chukuma's thoughts. Uh, thank you so very much, Dr. Tanko. Mr. Chukuma, I saw you on several occasions nodding uh, when Dr. Tanko was talking there. Clearly, um, even before listening to the speech, we can see that we are already making the same point, kind of alluding to the need uh, for us to be together as a nation. I I'd like you to speak on that theme of, you know, together as a nation and having a Nigeria that is a Nigeria for all, representing everyone, which is essentially what uh, Dr. Tanko was talking about uh, before we move to you. Okay, th thank you. Uh, I, um, I agree with my colleagues that the speech was beautiful, but there is a, a sentence in that speech hmm. that, uh, in my view, you know, puts a, a huge question mark on what successive leaders in Nigeria have done that perhaps have not moved this country forward. And that is where he said that he is building a solid foundation for Nigeria's future. And I'm like, for how long will successive leaders be building foundation? For goodness sake, this foundation has been built or started in 1914, mm -hmm. consolidated at DPC level in 1960. What we need is people to build on the progress made by their predecessor. By always going back to foundation means that we are jettisoning what uh, our predecessors did. And if you come to a construction site and all you see is every leader who is appointed as headman of the site keep building foundation, mm. what kind of picture would you see? So it's actually when they say they are building foundation that makes Nigerians believe that perhaps nothing has been done before. And then he goes on to say that the fault lines are artificial. Yes, I agree. At independence, they were artificial because they were colonially drawn boundaries. But successive leadership have given them mental blocks mm -hmm. to the extent that today they have moved from being artificial to mm -hmm. being boundaries of concrete blocks. And it takes, as Dr. Tanko said, leadership by example to begin to deconstruct them. If you draw an infrastructural development map of Nigeria today, it will tell you a totally different picture from what the president uh, said in his speech. So for me, again, going back to what Dr. Tanko said in his initial speech, that we perhaps need to look at how we did it before. Mm -hmm. The economy of Nigeria grew the fastest when it was driven by the region. I'm not saying we should move Nigeria back to three or four regions. What are the elements? in that period that we can bring to today to fast track development. And the elements are the fact that each region had the where with that. We didn't have the kind of constitution we have today where you have 60 items on the exclusive list, which only the federal government could legislate on. And that reduces all the federating units to beggars who every month goes to Abuja to take a location and go and distribute. So okay. each federating unit should have the wherewithal to look at their backyard, 
Because okay, that's Mr. what Chikuma. Ahmadu Bello did. That's what Awolowo did. That's what Zeke exactly. did. And developed at their own pace using the materials they have. And if you look at the kind of investment they made in human capital development, it was targeted awesome. at the needs of the region. Awesome. Today, awesome. we are training people without any labor map, any okay. labor assessment of the needs of uh, Nigeria. And what happens at the end of the day, as soon as we finish training them, they go to countries where they are needed. Okay. Any country Mr. Chukuma, that's serious uh, uh, does manpower. We have, uh, we have so much to discuss. In areas uh, that are of need. Thank you so much. We have so much to talk about on this program, but let's quickly go on a home stretch now, talking about the solution. Uh, I must say that there's been a whole lot of um, uh, diagnosis now. Let's look at way forward. Mm -hmm. You know, when I woke up this morning, I had one goal. The goal is what will make this broadcast different from every October 1st that we'll be doing. And that brings me to a pain in my heart that, you know, I may not have traveled around the world, but some of the things I see in other climbs, I'm just asking the question, what does it take to build this institution? Because for me, I think it's an institution. When we see the bridges in New York, when we see some of these things, nobody mentioned who built it. It is always about a structure that is in place. Mm, when a government leaves office, the work continues. But what we see every now and then is, oh, Buhari did this, Idiagwan did this, this one did this. When are we going to move away from lead, I mean, this narration and look at a governance that works? Thank you. Well, we'll move away from that arrangement where we get, you know, the politics right, uh, politics right, where we get governance right. And uh, this structure, it will be very difficult to guarantee that kind of environment under this structure. The truth is that the years, like uh, you know, the gentleman there just mentioned, in terms of the various gains we had in the days of you know the regions, it was because there was federalism. I've never, you know, in, in the few books I've read, I've not seen where we have a true and false federalism. Mm -hmm. Federalism is just federalism. federalism. Yeah, but, but unfortunately, the Nigeria political system has evolved a new style of it that you now have true federalism and false federalism. Now, yes, and that is the only reason why you could be talking about, you know, an exclusive list that has so much, so loaded, and you have practically nothing or very little and left for the, the units. Now, unfortunately, too, the Nigerian system seems to be totally different as it is today from other federal states that I know. Because the states, as they are today, are creations of the federal government. It is the constitution, the president, or the presidency, whoever you want to attach it to, that created the states. But look at other federations. And most you, times under the military government. Exactly. I think that you, we've not created any state outside the military. Exactly. Uh, yes. So right. now, but you, you now have other places where autonomous states, autonomous groups, decided to align together for certain reasons. And by so doing, they would have ironed out all the issues that are involved. Areas of benefits, areas of strength, and all the other issues. But in this case, they are just created, and you know you find instructions handed over to them, and that is an area I expected that the, federal, uh, the president was going to address because it was part of the agenda he presented when he was campaigning then. Mm -hmm. And I recall that the APC actually, you know, uh, set up a committee to look at the issues of restructuring. Now, maybe the word restructuring is what is really creating the problem. But the truth is, we are looking well, it's at... It's been misinterpreted. Yes, different interpretation. But the solution really is that we must operate a system that is truly federal, where states will be the ones sponsoring the federal, that is, the federation units, will be the ones sponsoring the, the central. The Not the central now sharing money, mm -hmm. as if it's a federal Christmas, and unfortunately the money is... The, the center is sharing is actually the life, the blood of the people. Exactly. So, yeah, so at the end of the day, you've crippled the entire system that ought to have, you know, be, be, come together to federate. And it has created a lot of this, this so bad, bad blood. Bad. And mm -hmm. fear of this distrust has, you know, been entrenched by virtue of this system of operation. And until we get to that level, there won't be competition. Because as we speak, you find states with all the capacities they have, they will be waiting for oil money. You know, while the Which oil states are suffering anyways. issues of uh, mm. all the things that are associated with oil exploration, the benefits 
are not shared according to that. For instance, you look at the sharing formula. I've equally not seen when you have a, 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 a federal government, you have a state that is federated, then you have local government that is equally federated. I've not seen that. You know, so the system we run is actually problem, you know, induced. I mean, at the end of the day, you find out that it, can, yeah, it cannot work effectively. The kind of development we experienced in the days of regionalism was simply because the various units were able to, you know, hold their activities and the people could hold on to them. Mm -hmm. They could hold their leaders accountable. Now, even generally, you now find this impression that states, the people don't even hold their governors to account. Sim simply because they want to believe that it is from Abuja they collected money. Mm -hmm. they but if they were actually, you know, sourcing their resources within their environment and utilizing it, the tendency that people will be able to ask them, what have you done with this one? But when the man goes to Abuja to collect as if somebody has just given him a dash, a gift, it, people find it difficult to address those issues. So I am thinking that one major thing we must address is the issue of the system of government we operate. And again, if you ask any Nigerian today what system of government we are operating, yeah, obviously what you are going to hear is democracy. But is it really democracy? That is, that is a question. That's part okay. of the question. You know, Our time is really fast, but let's get your thoughts <laughs> on the way forward. Okay. Uh, so let, we, speak to, we speak to Dr. Uh, Tanko now. What's your thoughts? What's the solution? Because today we, we are going to hear how Nigeria is not working, how it's trying to work and how it's coping. But what are the concrete steps that we need to take now to make uh, Nigeria begin to work and to make Nigeria great again, if we would borrow that uh, famous <laughs> mantra? <laughs> Dr. Tanko. Okay. Okay. First of all, there is this particular uh, theory that I was formulating in my mind that we need to call for a national reconciliation conference. We need to heal wounds. We need to start helping people to believe in themselves and work together as a team. Just like we've already agreed that the country is so divided, people don't trust each other. If you want to travel to the East, if you are a northerner, you will try to change your clothes to have a shirt and a trouser so that people, in case of certain trouble, may pick up so you would like to disguise. So also, if an easterner is coming up, you want to wear a jalabia, forgetting his red cap and all, you know, and southwest and all. So we need to have that reconciliation of saying the story. I, probably the president of Nigeria as of today, am apologizing on behalf of my predecessors and myself for the problems that we've caused this nation, especially the people. Please start trusting us. We need to work together as one. Then two, we need to find, to have a listening ear, to listen to the cries of the different parts of this country. Every part of this country have an issue with the federal government. And that would be, if they listen to some of the agitation that they've put in, we cannot say, okay, as a Government, we can do A, B, C out of the problem in which you've already established. Once that is done, the people will start believing in the system. Thirdly, we need to find a way of giving employment and education to the people, especially the young children, the downtrodden, because lack of education has given room for all kinds of thinking. Even when you say one thing, somebody can transform it to be another thing, and then all hell will break loose. When you start to do that, the economic empowerment, then the people will start working. We need to believe in some of the product. We have to start thinking about production as a people. I am living in Kaduna as of today. Do you know that there's an area in Kaduna called Kakuri? In Kakuri, is an industrial area. In that industrial area, what we have there is basically textile industries. As I speak with you today, that tester industry, no one of them working. Mm -hmm. They were almost up to about 10 to 15 of them. Could have given employment to our youths. Could have been producing the wrappers that you see or that we are gladly using on those days. Or even textile material that can be used for that. And I believe that is what is happening in almost every area of this country. These are some of the simple things that we need to do. And when we give employment, for God's sake, we need to remove nepotism. Okay. Every Nigerian has the capacity very, to Very, very strong point. Once it's been...
Very, very strong you point. So, thank you so much. Uh, I wish we could continue. Absolutely. It's quite loaded. But let me quickly get your final thought, uh, Mr. Chukuma. Uh, I, 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 there's something the president said. I don't know whether it resonates with you, because this is part of what your foundation does. Mm -hmm. It said lifting out 100 million Nigerians out of poverty. It's not a new word, but are we heading in that direction? Uh, unfortunately, we are not because we are not building a production-based economy. Our economy is still largely uh, a distribution economy where everybody waits at the end of the, of the month to get a handout. And how to change that is to make the federating regions or federating states as the driver of national production by weakening some of the powers that the federal government has that it is actually not you, uh, using. I don't know why we should have 60 items in the exclusive list in the, in, in the Constitution, and very few for the state. In most federation, it's the other way around, where the federal restricts itself to a few areas of defense, uh, foreign affairs, uh, immigration, and all of that, and transfer the management of the economy to the subnational level and private sector, and, and it can be done. If it is something the Buhari administration can be kit to the successor administration, I think he will leave his name in gold. He doesn't ask that. Dr. Tanko said, we need to come together to say we have bottomed out. Where do we head from now? Drawing from the diverse resources and expertise that we have, we are immensely endowed. Time has passed where the, the human capital development is restricted in one region. There is no state in Nigeria today that cannot produce first-class materials to govern this country. Why are we not giving them a chance? And that's what we need to focus on. Oh, it's so sad that um, we have to end this conversation. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. getting more, more interesting. interesting. Uh, okay, I, I was told that I can give you one more line to, to deliver on this, but let me quickly get your further thoughts on this issue. Yeah. Looking at what the president said, deepening and sustaining the democracy, these are another words we are used to. Yes. And uh, okay. a very good example somebody would say, if the president is allowed to, have, to be part of this conversation, maybe we should even put it on record, uh, Malam Garbashi was supposed to be part of this conversation mm -hmm. too, but probably because of the, sh you know, a lot of work yes. going on mm -hmm. at this Asurok is not able to, but if there's anything the president will quickly talk about, it will remind us of what happened in a do state. Yes. And you would say you allow democracy to thrive. Yes. But are we heading in the direction, if the president enjoys that kudos, are we sure this will this you know, go beyond him? As a matter of fact, it's a misnomer to even say that the president is the one who is doing that. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's an admittance of the fact that they have been the obstacle to the deepening of mm -hmm. democracy in Nigeria. It's not the responsibility of the president for free and fair, for the conduct of free and fair election. It should be a given. It's, 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 it's something that should ordinarily mm. be. It's not something. So for us to begin to appeal to Mr. President, please, is, your, is it the chairman of INEC? Mm. You know, it shows that they have been the ones strangulated the system. So when you mean the one now? Uh, you know, no, no, the leadership, those who in charge, because it's eventually it's the president who gives all the instructions, all the, if I, as a matter of fact, even the police, what to listen to the body language or what, what the president will feel like doing before they take it. It's not that they don't know what to do. Now, for you to deepen democracy, people must be knowledgeable about the system and about operations and the activities of democracy itself. As we speak, as we on strike, the universities are shut down. You know, how else are you going to build those minds that will be able to say, okay, this is what you put on the table. Let's analyze it. Or are you saying that those who never had any form of education are the ones who will be able to analyze policies? So when you present you know, your materials, your manifesto, whatever, to the public, and people don't understand what you are doing, what you are presenting, and again, you've created an environment that is hostile to the extent that they are now so pauperized, they are not informed, what are you expecting? So at the end of the day, you will discover that the system itself is the one created all the problem. The leadership. So the way forward, really, is that we must prioritize certain things. To start with, you must have sound health for you to be able to participate in any of these things. Because without that, nothing matters to you. Then you must have something to eat. And for you to be hungry, 
the first god you are going to worship is your stomach. The stomach. Then <laughs> knowledge is critical. And that is why we must ensure that we invest heavily in our institutions, educational institutions, whether at the primary level, because a lot of times you hear half-baked, half-baked. You know, it is the way they were baked from the beginning. Right. That eventually they will be passed out because it is not really the duty of the university to do all those foundational issues. You know, but when the foundation is, is faulty, just like the other one has said, we keep building Be foundation. As a matter of fact, we are not building foundation and building. We are destroying the previous foundation. That's why we mm. keep on, you know, uh, try to build foundation. Because at the time you put a block on a foundation, it will move up. But when you destroy it, then you'll be going down it's the board. So we down. must invest in our institutions. Because when you talk about strong institutions, whether political or whatever, there are no institutions that can grow themselves. It is the capacity of the people. No society can rise above the capacity of its people. So until you have a people who have the capacity to do all of these things, in terms of intelligence, in terms of morals, in terms of the values they operate, okay. until you have all those ones, it will be difficult to run any system successfully. So we must focus on all those issues. Very powerful lines. I'm telling you. So, uh, Dr. Tanko, like, I, like we always say in our parlance, uh, yeah, one for the road again. So looking at the speech again, uh, uh, when you mentioned national healing, that got me you know, a bit emotional because 50 years after the Civil War, we still see some of these vestiges there. We see some of these uh, issues that got us you know, bringing out daggers against one another still present. How do we build this national healing? Well, um, quickly, you know, way back then, when we were together uh, in Kaduna, there's this particular festive period that takes place where you have the uh, Christmas, we have um, uh, Ilea festival. What usually happens is that, um, you know, there are predominantly some Christians and Muslims in Kaduna, for example. Now, when it's time for Christmas, as young boys and girls, what we used to do is to bring out um, the chickens. The Christian will bring out the chickens, so they will give the northern and the Muslims. The Muslim will slaughter the chicken, not minding anything. They will give it to their Christian brother. The Christian that give the chicken to the Muslim brother knows very well that a, a northern or a Hausa Muslim will not eat any. Uh, livestock without praying. So he gave it to him out of the feeling that we are together. We have the same feeling. Go slaughter it for me. Then I will take it inside my bedroom. Not minding how I cook it, I will cook the beautiful, delicious delicacy uh, soup, then bring the food out for all of us to share and eat. That has that particular strong feeling of nationalism and belief and trust. And that is how we have been in those years as a country, as a people. The other day I was traveling to Benin. I can't believe I spent almost two days on the road to get to Benin from Abuja. Wow. Because from Kogi State, from Kogi State, every road in and out of Kogi State is bad. Every road in and out of Kogi is bad. Then you now have Heavy police presence, checking everything, including your pants, if possible. <laughs> and that is the way the country is being run. And people, leaders are saying it. We don't want to take care of each other. We don't want to protect each other. You can't imagine, you can't imagine somebody, the governor of Borno State was almost gone down. Some people now say, hey, it is a problem in the north. They created it. They don't, they don't deal with it. Or a, a, the daughter of a global leader in the Southwest was abducted. And then people would say, I don't care. It didn't. No. That is not who we are. We were Nigerians. At the moment we set out of this country, we love each other like glue. Why can't you come home and do the same thing? We need to come back to our senses. We are losing it. And the moment we build together as a, and bound together, I can tell you, no country can catch us because we have the brains. As uh, Dr. Innocent has said, nowhere in this world that you not find Nigerians. We are there performing excellently well. Why can't we bring that excellency back home to make it a beautiful country that everybody will be proud of? I am a Nigerian and I'm proud to be one. And I believe Nigeria can be better 
far, far better than the way we are as of today. Only if we put that particular word that Mr. President, the capacity that we have to live together and peacefully can be reenacted. Honestly, we can go places. Okay. Okay, so uh, Dr. Innocent, we got to be fair to you too. Uh, 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 looking, at, looking at what he said, though, no, this is majorly for the evening segment where we'll be looking at the youth, the, how they've thrived in the, the creative industry. How much of that can we tap into to really get the best out of this country? Because it looks that we're indeed blessed with human resources. I wish you would uh, grant me a minute uh, or two to contribute to the important uh, message from Dr. Tanko uh, Go ahead. around <laughs> me memory, because uh, I was born in 1966, uh, and that was the, the year this country started un unraveling. My first five years were spent uh, in world IDP camp and all of that. And up till today, I can't look forward to any date in our calendar to memorialize the loss. And, uh, and that goes across the country because there is no part of the country today, there's no state where people do not feel a sense of grief with all the sectarian violence, the civil wars and all of that. And actually looking for a leadership that will build a national memorial, a monument and dedicate a day out of 365 days, say, let's mourn our loss and let's bring all the victims those who suffered losses from 1966 to now that this country is there for you and this country will protect you. And on the basis of that, on May 25th, 2017, as the director of Ford Foundation, I actually supported a convening in Abuja, which by the way was the first convening since the end of the Civil War that brought people from government. The vice president was then the acting president and people came and spoke and share their memories, how they protected one another during that war. And we left agreeing that we needed to have a monument in Abuja at that national unity uh, park. Why can't we do something there and dedicate a day to mourning our loss? The only one we have today is uh, January 15th, which is for armed forces. And by the way, it was the armed forces that conflagrated this country. And yet we have a day to uh, memorialize them. Meanwhile, the victims, the millions mm. that continue to die mm. every day, there is no date state aside. And no country does that. You can't wish away mm. your past, okay. but you can build on it by saying, on this day, we say it to, on behalf of ourselves and our future generation, never will we allow our country to descend into this kind of chaos again and build on that. I would want us to do that. And then going back to what you said about um, in empowering the youth. When I started, I said, the only bright light this country has today is its young stars who are thriving in spite of, not because of the uh, government or, their leader, or the leadership in this country. And all they need is actually affirmation. Look at, because of uh, the crime of a few uh, in Nigeria, in uh, Yahoo, we have destroyed the tech industry. Any young person today who has a laptop we don't know whether the person is developing an application that will solve the problem of this country. Mm -hmm. The police will pull the person aside. And God help that person if he or she doesn't have parents who can come and pay a lot of money to free them. Now, many of them are deserting Yaba. You see the, this backpack, that is the office of young people today. That's where they design amazing things. But any police officer who sees a young person with a backpack, the person is already profiled. The same way in the Northeast and Northwest, if any young person is wearing a kaftan or wearing bed, the person is already suspected of being a member of Boko Haram. How can you build a future like this? Wow. It begins with law and regulation. We have a rogue regulation industry in Nigeria, and we need to deal with that Thank to you so create much. a level playing field for our young people to thrive. And if we do that, Believe me in confidence, as Dr. Tanko said, just give us a few years, we will leapfrog everything. Nollywood, out of nothing, leapfrog the entertainment industry to the extent that today is the second largest right. 
uh, movie producer in the world. And young people can do that across sectors. All right, Mr. Chukuma, thank you so very much, uh, Chukuma Innocent of uh, Ford Foundation, for your thoughts. You've all put it very succinctly and, and put it also in context. Thank you for your time. And also, of course, to Dr. Tanko Yunusa, thank you for the practical examples that you also gave. Uh, we want to make Nigeria great again. Indeed, we hope that we'll do that. And also in studio, we have uh, Dr. Dan Ekere, who is also here and shared your thoughts. We want to thank all of you for helping us dissect the issues. Am I correct? Exactly. <laughs> and exactly. bringing all our troubles to fore and hoping that we get solution to all of them. Do keep safe out there and have a great celebration ahead of you. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.